Well, hello there and buona iso sifiwe. What a great privilege and honor and joy it is to have you yet one more time. My name is Brian Mashigati. I'm coming to you um, yet one more time. Karibu to the Harvest Conversations. We started this a while back and we continue um, to the glory of God the Father. Today, we are getting into an interesting interesting session um for the next couple of weeks actually and we invite you to follow along so share with a few people let them know that this is happening uh that the harvest conversations are on in set on set in studio in the house today <laughs> we have two of my brothers uh and good friends i want to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves i'm going to start with the one right in the center so please tell us your name um where you serve and just a little bit more about yourself uh, hi everyone, my name is uh, Jackson Kiari. I uh, serve uh, in Deliverance Church, Kahawa West. I'm uh, part of the youth ministry. I serve as, as a youth pastor there. And um, I'm glad to be in the house, Brian. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm sure we're going to be having an awesome, awesome time as we discuss what you're going to be discussing throughout these sessions. Um, well, I'm, I'm married. I'm, I'm, I'm a husband of one woman. <laughs> Jenna Chieng, Kiari, such a blessing. And um, recently a father <laughs> of uh, one Ramona Imani Kiari. Uh, and uh, we bless God for that. I think maybe along the way we'll discuss a bit more about what I am and all that. But thank you so much, Brian. God bless you. Awesome. Asante Santa Baba Ramona. Yeah. Come out here, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Ramona. Come on. All right. It's thank you. Name. Thank it's you. The it's, the it's the name for the name. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Welcome to uh, Harvest Conversations. And on the very far left, yeah. Karibu Sana, introduce yourself. Santana, I'm going to Shad. Shad Rakmindi Mbithi, I'm going to I serve in fellowship at Deliverance Church, Kaskari. Um, I have two sons. Yeah. Shani and Shama, and my wife Shiro. Yeah, na tunashukuru mungu maali pale ambapo ametupanda kwa sasa. Asante sana, yeah. Amen. Halish. Welcome, welcome. Asante sana. Iyo nyumba ya maes. Tumasikia tu Shad, Shiro, Shama, Shani. Come on. Yeah. So, sahani pia zika uko. Ya kwa iyo nyumba. So, songa, songa. Shoka. Salama. <laughs> Salama. So a doctor, Kabisa. <laughs> Shukran. <Yeah. laughs> mm. For a brazenness. Yeah. So good to have you guys. Uh, these guys are my friends and um, brothers in the Lord, and I'm happy to. Uh, I don't think I have. There's a better squad to go through the book of um, Jude with. Wow. That's right. We're going to the book of Jude. Jude is an interesting book. So we just want to do a quick um, like introduction and overview. Uh, we think it's going to be quick. That's what we think. But Najwa, kwa growl sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we want to go into the book of Jude. And there are a few interesting things about the book of Jude. We're going to be covering that as well. Now, as we continue, we want to allow you to please interact with us. Drop some of those nuggets up or down in the comment section. And if by this point you still haven't invited somebody, please let them know that we are on, okay? Uh, share this link with them if you can. Um, if you're catching us on YouTube, if you're catching us on Facebook, um, you can tag, mention the names of the people in the comment section. Let them know that we are on, yeah? Uh, going through the book of Jude. Also, this would be a good time for you to go and grab your Bible if you still hadn't because you're going to be at this for a bit. Uh, so grab your Bible, grab a notebook as well, or you could, you know, put those notes down in the comment section and then you could just copy all of those things, either screenshot or you could copy them and save them in your notepad so that you can go and read them later. Okay, enough about that. It's only tips, is how to grow. Yeah. Yes. So the book of um, Jude, um, you want to take us through a bit of the introduction? Yeah, probably. And then you can, you guys can add what I've left out. Um, Jude is... It's, it's one of the shortest books. It has one chapter. We actually don't have chapter one in Jude. Most Bibles in Mendiqua are Jude. And that's it, verse one, verse two, all the way to the last verse. Um, it, it is the shortest, one of the shortest books uh, in the New Testament, yet it could be one of probably the most profound. Um, we were discussing with these guys the other day, and, and they were saying that some of these short books are actually... Uh, a preface of longer books that are being written afterwards. So it's really important to take note of these shorter, shorter books. Well, who is Jude? Let me just start there. Um, Jude is the one, one of the half-brothers of Jesus Christ. We all know that Jesus was born um, 
taught by the Holy Spirit and through Mary. So the Father was the Holy Spirit of God, the Father. And Mary was the mother. And Joseph and Mary had other sisters, probably had other, other daughters, probably two or more, and other sons. The sons we know, it has been mentioned in the Gospels, four of them. And Jude is one of the sons. And so um, this is one of the brothers of Jesus Christ. Now, it's interesting to know that um, Jude is, uh, and the brothers are not so, so uh, prominent in the Gospels. Actually, uh, they, they never really appeared so much except when they're calling Jesus Christ and telling them, you are, uh, the disciples are calling, uh, are calling Jesus and saying, your brothers and your mother are here and they want to get you home. I was uh, listening to some commentary, and the commentary was saying the reason why Jesus was being called mm -hmm. is because um, the brothers and uh, those guys were thinking and were actually thinking that Jesus is crazy. The brothers, literally crazy, like Kamechiz. <laughs> yeah. Um say anezajika toka home, a capital son, a lafa nazaku claim yendo messiah, like how, and all that. So Jude, Jude alikoyo mbogi. Yawala wasa walikona fikiru msa Kamechiz. So they were calling him home. Ndiwa? out of society. That's what they, 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 they wanted Jesus to do. But, yes, inter intervention, thank you. So, um, after the resurrection, when really Jesus is revealed, now that's when they really believe in Jesus Christ. And, 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 and we see another of his brothers become a really prominent person in, 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 yeah, in the church. And he becomes one of the leaders of the church. And we know him. He's called James. So it's not James, one of the disciples who has written the book of James. Mm -hmm. It is James, the brother of Jesus, who has written that awesome, awesome book. He's really meek guy, really good guy. So that's 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 who Jude is. Okay. Is is Saya Mikwa Bazu, watch out. He's a really prominent guy, mm -hmm. and he has he has an authority to speak to the church. Okay. I'm not sure if we know who the direct audience is, because yeah. it is written to to those who have been called. I don't know if it's a church mm -hmm. he was talking to. Um, but what, what we know is that uh, Bible scholars and historians tell us that, that the book was written um, AD 60 to AD 85, somewhere there, around there. So it's way after Jesus died and rose again and went to heaven. Um, I think that's, that's an overview of who Jude is and when it was written. Maybe, Shad, you can add something probably. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that um, Jack has captured the fact that the brothers of Jesus thought he was mad yeah. um, because of what he was professing. And I think it's actually true. For you to say the things that Jesus was saying, you'd either be three things. Number one, a liar, <laughs> <laughs> a lunatic, like you crazy, mad, or actually Lord. Yeah. And, and, Is the L's for me? And, and, and I think... Um, for the brothers to have seen this guy. And I think maybe some of the reasons why we don't understand why they, are, they think Jesus is crazy is because they have been with this guy. They've maybe seen him grow. And so they try and trace back where did this thing happen? Where did he all of a sudden become <laughs> the, the son of God? Where, where is the transition? Where, where, where is that transition phase? And so for them to actually say that, I think it, it kind of made sense yeah. to them at that point. And it's true that uh, Jude and James actually believe um, in Jesus after his death and resurrection. Uh, because when he died, oh, man, they were shocked that this guy, that the world would like come to a standstill. Very miraculous things would happen. And that was convincing for them. And so when Jude is writing this um, book, it seems like there's some false teachers that are starting to infiltrate the churches then yeah. uh, with some fake doctrines, with some false uh, behaviors and stuff like that that doesn't uh, go well with what scripture or with, what, with the practice of the Christian faith then and so Jude is writing to warn the Christians, the believers then, to beware of such people and to actually tell them to contend for the faith, defend the faith that you believe, defend 
the things you believe in. And it's an interesting, it's one very interesting um, book. I actually say that I think it's one of those books in the Old New Testament, sorry, that have not been read so much by Christians. Not many people know where actually it is. It's, 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 a, it's the yeah. second last second book. Last. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, um, it's, it's compressed, very... It's compressed between two really huge books. Yes, really. so it comes John. after Third John. John and A laugh <laughs> revelation. <laughs> okay. So, kwa wala msiende Old Testament tafadhali, iko tu wapo, maali tu wapo katikati ya Third John <laughs> revelation. And yeah, it's a short book um, about um, 25 verses. verses but very intense. All right, I'd like yeah. to, to just jump on that because both of you spoke about the audience. There's this thought that goes around whenever uh, there's Bible study yeah. that um, it's important to understand or to remember that the Bible was written in a certain context, yes. yeah? in a certain culture, at a certain time. Yeah. Um, and just going back to that will help us understand a few things yeah. about the text. Yeah. So as you're going through the book of Jude, I think it will be, uh, that's important, that's why we're giving the background, mm. uh, but then gives us the, the case for the audience mm. to say, you see, like Paul would write to the the, the Christians yeah. at Philippi, yeah? Yeah. or to the Colossians, mm. or to the Colossian church, or to the Corinthians, and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what what would we say to somebody who is thinking, okay, it was written to them, so what, what does has it that have to do, do with, with us me yeah. today? Uh, yeah. What what would you say yeah. to that? Okay. Well, um, you you want to. Give it a shot. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I like it that you said a shot. So. <laughs> um, the, the most interesting thing with the Christian mm -hmm. book, the Bible, is that it transcends time. Yeah, that's right. So that um, the, the content even if it had an immediate audience, audience yes. goes beyond that. Yeah. It is supra culture. It, it is still mm -hmm. um, as resourceful as it was then, yeah. now. Yeah. It supersedes um, generations. Mm -hmm. So that there are things you will read in this scripture that were written years ago that still apply to us today. Yeah. So that the Bible is not descriptive alone, but also prescriptive. Oh. There are things wow. about the Bible that prescribe or tell us how we should live life. Mm. And I think it applies to us today so that then even though the book of Jude is written to a specific audience at a certain time, there are things about this book, the, the message that this book bears is applicable for us in the 21st century. Wow. Yes, every comma, every full stop, everything still applies to us in the 21st century because if you are a reader of your Bible, you will understand that most of the things that are faced by people then are still situations that we go through so that the bible would say that there's nothing new on mm -hmm. earth there's nothing new and the word of god is sufficient in enough yeah. to sort all these issues yeah. and to speak about every issue that we go through regardless of the time wow. yeah all right Jack, you look like you're, you want to jump on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, to those who, verse one says, to those who have been called, and I'm just trying to uh, add on to what Shad is uh, saying. To those, he says three things about the audience. Mm -hmm. The audience has been called. Mm -hmm. Number one, to those who are loved by God the Father. The audience is loved mm -hmm. by God the Father. Okay. And number three, the audience is kept. By, by Jesus Christ. And so we have to ask ourselves about the, the, uh, what was then and what is now. Yeah. Is it, was it true then? Were they kept? Yes. 
Were they loved? Yes. yes. Were they called? Yes. yes. So we have to look at us Do we today. have people? Do we have people who, who are called? Are called yes. Today, yes. Uh -huh. Do like, we have people uh, like who, who are the people loved? who are listening to us? Yes. Yeah. Are they loved? Yes. Yeah. So again, it transcends generation. It wow. transcends culture. Wow. It transcends race. Yeah. We we have to look at the audience as not just back then, but, but even also now. even now today. We'll get to understand even later on mm. as we continue to read the book of Jude that it so applies there, what you've been talking about, yeah. about those guys who have infiltrated, yeah. that it so applies today, even back then, yeah. Yeah. just like it was back yeah. then. Yeah. It, it is th so the audience yeah. then and now totally relevant. Yeah. yeah. So to say, so long as at whatever point in time, yes. if the Lord tarries, at whatever point in time, so long as on the surface of the earth there are people who are called yeah. and beloved and, and preserved or kept, yeah. Yeah. then this is, applied. It, it, it applies to them. Yes. Yeah. Wherever you find yourself, um, if you are called and you know you are loved and you are, and that then would just generally, if we were to just it called to extrapolate. Yep. But to yeah. just yeah. pull it all the way to the use end. Them, use them, <laughs> use those words, use them. Then brother. that would mean this is for everybody because the, the, the love of God is, it reaches out to every person. Yeah. Um, so this is for everybody. Yes. If you ask us to separate, we'll, we'll go really way <laughs> deep down there because he's writing to those who are called yeah. mm -hmm. and you have to ask yourself, are you? Uh, okay. <laughs> so for, 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 for this scripture to apply... Yes, that's extrapolation <laughs> uh -huh. talking about. Okay, right. are okay. You, are you really? Okay. All right. are, are, you, are you in the Father's love? Okay. You, you just have to ask yourself mm -hmm. those questions. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I actually wanted to add a writer yeah. and say, um, Hebrews 4, uh, 12 would oh, say, yeah. for the word of God is living... To mean it's organic. Yes. It it lives. It has life. Yeah. It's just not something that was written. It's not your um, what log table square book <laughs> that you remember that kabuki we used when we were in yeah. high school to oh, sort <laughs> logarithms log and stuff. For it's me. not. It's not like that. It's not. Did uh, say uten log utengano. <laughs> It's not, it's not a hey, it's, it's, it's not, it, it it's is it's alive yeah. and uh, active. Mm -hmm. So that then something that has life has activity. Mm -hmm. It may not move, mm -hmm. but it grows. Wow. wow. It, it may not produce. Mm -hmm children but it transforms mm -hmm. so there is activity and there is life in the word of God yeah. and that applies oh. in the generations 50 generations to come 50 gone it, it applies till today yeah. yeah wow I mean I <laughs> I hope it it applies to you guys <laughs> it, it applies to you um, just think and I think that's really special <laughs> when I think about it that way, because it, it takes off the edge for thinking the Bible is a book that was written, Kitambo, it's an yeah. old book. It has nothing to say about the technology yes. um, or the era of technology that we find ourselves in. It has nothing to say concerning like the pandemic we find ourselves in right now. Yes. It has not, that, that, just that knowledge deals with that kind of mental weight. Mm. So that you put it down and then you're able to just delve into it. I know we're going to be covering a bit more about the Word of God uh, getting to this, but just before we, we land it on the introduction, before we get into the real uh, meat of it, we've already touched on the purpose yeah. of the book yeah. uh, and who the book was written to, we've, uh, addressed to, or yeah. who it is addressed to. We've looked at the, the authorship, writer, yeah. the, 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 the writer, and around what time yeah. it was written and who the author was, and I think that is important to, yeah. to cover as well. Um, but it's not... It's, it's important for us to also, there's, there's a phrase that goes like, um, scripture interprets scripture. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's important for us to place Jude where it is in scripture yeah. in relation to other portions of yeah. scripture sure. or in yeah. relation to, to the word. Yeah. Um, to realize that it's not a standalone book. Yes. Because I think if it said only one thing and it's the only place in scripture that says only this one thing, 
I think it would be a bit hard to try and place it. But that's yeah. not the case with Jude, yeah. yeah? It borrows from other places yeah. or other places borrow from it as yeah. well. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like you to just go in on that, um, yeah. some yeah. of the relationships that it has. Maybe I'll throw it to Shad first. Um, um, I think Second Peter, yeah. um, <laughs> from verse 1 all the way to 22, really captures about everything that Jude has to say. Mm -hmm. um, theologians argue that Peter writes his epistle from Jude. Um, if you read the book of Second Peter 2, from verse 1 to 22, it, 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 it has same wordings. Um, same phrases, same examples. Mm. Um, Peter would cite examples of the angels and how they are judged by God. He'd cite uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and how God rains um, fire on them and they're consumed. He'd cite um, Korah and Balaam. And when we get deeper into the book of Jude, we'll get to realize that these are quotations that are in the book of Jude. And so, and then plus the, 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 the topic that Jude is discussing is a topic that has been discussed by Jesus yeah. about warning the church and the, his disciples against false teachers. Um, um, Paul writing to Timothy, Timothy yeah. warning him about false teachers. Um, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 1 all the way, uh, writing to the Corinthians church, warning them about a people who had come and were preaching a different Jesus, yeah. a different gospel and a different spirit. So the, 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 the topic of discussion in the book of Jude is, is not a topic that you'll only find in the book of Jude alone. Uh, so, so, so that theologians would actually argue and say that we can't make a doctrine out of one text. There has to be a repetition of yes. the same thought because we all agree that the word of God is one story, one story about one thing. And so for there to be... Um, supporting pillars that would make something doctrine, it has to be repeated several in the Bible. It has to be a practice of the early church. And, and I see um, the book of Jude um, revealing such things to us where uh, Peter would say things that are written in the book of Jude. Um, Paul would actually say things that we can see even if paraphrased, um, they are clear in the book of Jude. Yeah. yeah. And probably um, while these people were listening to Jesus Christ, um, they just picked from him what exactly he said. they are warning yeah. the, the church about. Yeah. And, and I love the words in Matthew 7, mm -hmm. um, verse, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Watch out for false prophets. Mm -hmm. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. I love this verse. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Mm. And Jude is kind of surprised that, um, no, you guys, in fact, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he says, yo, I was, I was just about to, you guys, I was just about to write about this salvation that we love and we bat. And, and, and he says, but. Something. I need to warn you guys about something yeah. that you, you are supposed to, it's like you were saying, you're supposed to see these things. But it's like you're not seeing it's, it. It's, it's like you're not seeing it. Yeah. So, and, and it's the same, same words that Jesus would tell them some years ago. Yeah. You know, it says, um, you, you will see them, um, and I love what someone said, that you will never, ever, uh, a wolf will never, ever appear to sheep and say, yo, guys, I'm a wolf. Follow me. Yeah. You know, a liar will never say, I'm a liar, listen to me. Mm. No, they will appear, they, they, will, they will get in with, with so much skill mm. and so much, you know, silence. And they will grow inside and bear, bear their roots inside the fellowship. And then will, you know, will now manifest their fruit. Mm. And that's what we are, we are talking about here. Yeah. That Jesus is telling these guys, 
you want to know these guys you will know them by their don't fruits. look at yeah don't don't look at how eloquent they are speaking yeah don't look at how um how how the, how many degrees they have okay don't look at how many um um uh, what how, what their social media handles uh, followers the followers they have yeah. don't, don't look at all that you want to know these guys don't even look at funny enough don't even look at how how well they expose we can scripture. actually make it controversial yes. and say do not look even do not look at the success of the their ministry thank you the success of their ministry yeah the fruit by 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 saying by their fruit jesus was saying look at their character yes it's character yes that tells me it's character that tells me that this guy is legit yeah that this guy is not legit yeah. and i think yeah. that's th that, that's it for me yeah actually that's what Jude is is about to tell us when we get into it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow yeah. i mean um i i our time is running i our time is running but um uh, jack uh, alluded to something uh, actually mentioned it um in 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 the beginning when jude jude is writing and he's saying i wanted to write to you all along i wanted to write to you about our common salvation yes he says but now i feel compelled to yeah. actually write to you concerning these things mm. and then now he gets into the meat of it to their false teachers and and letting them know what they're supposed yeah. to be doing yeah. um and and just placing that right in the introduction because it comes at the beginning of the book um places i think as we are as we are looking at it places a lot of weight on the fact that it is quite the inspiration of god we know all scripture is god breathed and yes. is profitable and so on and so forth yeah. um yet i feel like jude is one of those ones because or especially so because he says uh, all along all the while i was planning to write about yes. this common salvation yes. but now i feel like i should i, I it's yeah. it's like he's under a certain compulsion or unction yeah. um to to want to invite them to come on board and tell them no this is i think this is more pressing yeah. matters i think i'd put yeah. it that way yeah. yeah so placing weight on you know the, the the fact that together with why it has been addressed to us as well yeah. it is um it has the express breath of god saying wow. i'm addressing this yes. this certain yeah. need in the church then yeah. uh, jesus spoke about like you're yeah. saying jesus spoke about try to warn us about or yeah. give us we have the marks for it but yeah. he's surprised that guys are, are you not seeing this our lord and savior covered yeah. this yes. so how is it that you guys yeah. guys yeah. wake up yeah well okay <laughs> That's the introduction to the book of Jude. Yeah. I don't know whether we have anything wow. to um, land the introduction because yeah. some more is coming. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing yeah. what you've said, mm -hmm. um, that Jude had intentions of writing about a different thing. Mm -hmm. it, it just captures me how sensitive to the spirit this brother is, that, yeah. and, and how he was willing to let go his, his motives. motives. Yes. and desires to allow the Lord to be the guide, wow. yeah. be the lead. Uh, I think one of the uh, character traits of a um, false teacher is one who has full grasp of everything and controls everything by his power and strength. Yeah. Wow. But then if we are open to allowing the Holy wow. Spirit to guide, wow. to lead, so that today I'd want to come and encourage us but then the Holy Spirit of the Lord impresses in my heart. You know what, Chad? I, I, and it's seen in scripture where Paul wants to go and preach in a certain place. Mm -hmm. And he says Spirit. he was restrained by, by the Holy Spirit, Spirit yeah. of God. Do you see the openness that this man had when it came about dealing life and just doing ministry? It wasn't about them. It was about God. So it had to be done by his standards Come and his on. ways. Yeah. And I think that's the depth of walking in obedience. Wow. Wow. Total surrender. Wow. And I think this is a book that really exemplifies that. Yeah. And reveals to us that, man, you know what? We, we need to be open and allow the Lord to interfere, yeah. quote unquote, with our programs. Yeah. 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 I had someone quote and say, Ati prayer is um, allowing oh, God to interfere, with the, God to interfere with the issues of men. God has nothing to do with that. He owns everything. Why do you think he needs to interfere with you to sort anything? Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's just part of the, the, the text that you're yeah. talking about. So I think it's good to be open. Yeah. And allow the Lord to take the 
the the stairway. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, would like to take a break on this. I want to continue reminding you if you have any questions right from the introduction. We've covered a lot of things, man. I, I'm not sure that was an introduction because that was a lot of meat as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them in. Uh, then in the very end, at the tail end of the book of Jude, we are going to put this together. We'll have the gang back come and answer a couple of our questions or some of the things that um, you know might have come up uh, that will continue to come up. So please do that. Continue to share with your friends. Let them know that next week, a time like this, we're going to be back here getting into the meat of it. But I want to pray with us because you might be joining us and maybe um, you, you really need grace. You want the Lord to help you yeah. to, to walk this journey together with you. And it would be such a beautiful thing for us right from the beginning to lay down our agenda and to allow God to do his thing. So let's yeah. pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we're so grateful because you are faithful and true. Thank you because you did not leave us to wander in darkness on this earth. You released your word that is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, that it will continue to shine the way for us every day, revealing the face of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and making sure that we are not lost out at sea, but that we have direction every day of our lives. As we get and continue to delve into the book of Jude, Lord Jesus, we pray, that you will help us, that we'll let go of our lives, let go of our agenda, let go of, of the wheel that we seem to be um, steering, oh God, and that will allow you to be, be big and be God and be glorified and be honored and have your way and have the reins of our lives. That Lord Jesus, indeed every day we would, we would have the attitude to say that Lord, we plan to do one, two, three things and we ask that you will be with us. But we also ask you that wherever it is that you are going and you desire us to be in those places, that, Lord, you would take us to those places with you as well, outside of our one, two, three things. We yield and surrender ourselves to you, and we thank you for everyone that joins us, O oh God, because this is the same prayer we make for them. Because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we'll see you guys next time, next week, a time Bye. like this. Yeah. Let somebody know. That is about to go down. Karifasan and God bless you. God bless you.